Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestling Art with Chris Things. Do the hammer. Welcome back to another episode of Wrestling Art with Chris Things. I am Chris Things. Brian, your host this week and every week. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm generally the, the art dude here, but this week we have another very special edition of the show, the Wrestling Art Curator Edition, where instead of just art dude, I, I play the role of, uh, of, of curator of other rad art dudes, I guess, uh, and two deaths. <laughs> um, so I am stoked as uh, this week to be talking to a, a gentleman known to uh, to some of you as uh, Lil Petey Puro, uh, known to others with as the the sick Instagram handle Gutch Style Bong Rips. So good. <laughs> <laughs> uh very stoked to talk to this dude about his art um that'll be coming up in in just a little bit but a very very fun little old chat um but yeah in the, the meantime my, my little what's been going on in the world of chris things intro monologue well um so last week i had my those uh the the wrestling art show at, at netherworld um that uh that took place uh wonderful uh group show um I, I spoke a little bit last time about preparing uh the the artworks and everything for it uh, but i realized I didn't really tell you much about the night <laughs> uh so we had both the um the opening night uh and then on the the sunday they actually had a whole uh themed uh wrestling evening at the bar complete with the trivia um, and then a bunch of people making their own uh, entrances and cutting promos and stuff, uh, all, all trying to to win the, the the best one of the evening. And man, it was it was honestly so much fun. Um, like I, so it was super cool to see uh, her in a couple of ways, right? Uh, so both for for me, just sort of seeing a collection of of different people uh doing wrestling arts uh you know in in like this i mean netherworld in describing it for you um it's a it's a i guess an eclectic kind of bar that's obviously centered towards a, a bit of the 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 nerddom things of like you know uh, video games and they have um different uh, i think dungeons and dragons nights and and uh pinball stuff and uh different movie nights and things like that so an eclectic kind of spot and they also always have really cool art shows on you know uh so this uh being sort of more on the wrestling focus side of it it was just so cool to me to see that that i don't know that that wrestling art in the air if uh if you you know what i mean uh it's kind of like a celebration of this wrestling art community uh that you know, I'm I'm all about obviously doing this wrestling podcast. Wrestling art podcast is is kind of all about that too, and wanting to, um, you know, talk to other creatives, talk to different wrestlers, uh, wrestling artists. Um, yeah, so it was super cool to see. Uh, I got to have some wonderful chats as well. Um, through the the couple of days there, uh, both um, you know, to some familiar faces uh, also ma- made in completely uh new um cool as folks who I'd, I'd never even known before uh and then just having like a like a 45 minute chat about <laughs> the ins and outs of wrestling art and just wrestling in general um it was it was super fun um yeah i was pretty stoked with my my three uh little old paintings that i have up on the wall there so if you're in the Brisbane area, please get on down to um, Netherworld where they'll be up on those walls for the next uh, few weeks or so. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, um, 
really cool time and uh that, that wall of of eclectic uh wrestling art was super cool to see um you know ranging from uh you know classic uh kind of stuff uh with like undertaker and and some people's uh, amazing like ecw nostalgia kind of stuff and it was a trip for me as well seeing um uh one of the pieces had like you know Shawn michaels and, and kurt angle and I was like, how is that retro wrestling? You know, that's like current, isn't it? And then I realized, hey, Chris, this, <laughs> this match from like 2003 occurred 20 years ago. You're, you're just old. So, yeah, that was a little confronting. Um, but no, fun as time. Um, other than that, I've uh, had uh, some more commission stuff I've been working on for my much-loved um, commission clients. Uh, so I've got some really fun stuff uh, lined up there that I, uh, I can't wait to, to be able to share with you. Um, and I've also, you might have seen, but I'm uh, participating in my first ever artist market this weekend. Uh, so again, for, for those of you all in the Brisbane area, at uh, Fallon's Barrel Hall this weekend on, uh, on Saturday, uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking part in this uh, great, artist market i think it's called something like that um where there'll be uh over you know 50 other artists but uh this is kind of like a progression on from the the oddities and curiosities expo that i did uh last year that that was just such a fantastic experience and wanting to do more in-person kind of events where i get to see people and meet people and talk to people um and uh you know pedal my wares <laughs> in person so I yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, I, I'm intrigued because you know the last time with the Oddities and Curiosities Expo, obviously that's a bit of a, a niche kind of audience, which I I think was was probably pretty good for my kind of clientele of uh, of wonderful weirdos. Um, so this one being more a general kind of like artist market. Um, I don't know. I, I wonder how that'll go. I wonder if is that going to be more um, more. <laughs> people kind of looking up my stuff and just giving me some real real odd stares uh i don't know i'll 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 let you know i'll get back to you we'll see we'll see how we go with this this one but no i'm still looking forward to it um yeah i, I think we've got some exciting stuff on on the horizon here um i'm, I'm still you know working my way up to, to try to work out all right exactly how best can i get my get my brand out there i guess fuck i hate i hate saying that that sounds so shit <laughs> you know what i mean um just uh get get more of the chris things out there sell more of the things do more commission things um yeah that's the goal we're still in the building stages but i i appreciate uh every one of you all out there because because you're you're here in these stages with me we're in this together guys you know uh, but I think that's, that's, a, that's a pretty pretty good little little amount for the intro monologue. So let's uh, let's throw over to our latest edition of the Wrestling Art Curator series of this little old podcast. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I am super stoked for the latest edition of our Wrestling Art Curator episode of the podcast. Uh, I have another way talented wrestling artist here to talk to, uh, a dude who does some way cool, rad uh like unique style illustrations that i really dig like delightful minimalistic kind of retro uh illustrations that really remind me of like a like a weird fucked up lowbrow tugboat mickey kind of vibe just in all the right ways uh welcome to the show little Petey puro Hello, hello, man. That was that was quite the introduction. I'm blushing over here, man. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> no, thanks, dude. I I appreciate uh, you coming on the show. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm uh, like I was telling you when we got on the call. I'm a huge fan of your work, 
And I was so I was just over the moon when you asked me to, uh, you know, to have this chat. And I'm stoked. Uh-huh. It seems it seems like we have a lot in common, like you said, when you reached out, like, you know, I think uh, pro wrestling has that uh, has that attraction. It can just get people from all from everywhere, you know. Oh, dude, for sure. Like the, the nerddom element of it. And when you get to just like vibe with someone over like, especially like the more semi obscure kind of stuff. I just, I just pop for it so much. Hey. Oh, same. And it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's the one I would only want to call it a hobby. Cause it's more of like, I'm a mark, you know, it's a lifestyle. So mm-hmm. like any other thing or hobby that I've had, the community and just people wise, like it's nothing like pro wrestling. Like, like you said, the nerd dumb, like we're all nerds, you know, like there's no cool guy atmosphere in pro wrestling. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like, you just have to like, you know, we're, we're geeking out here. Um, but yeah, like I had, uh, like that, um, wrestling art show thing the other week um and it was kind of cool we had like a it was like a wrestling themed uh day of festivities at um at this bar uh local bar in brisbane called netherworld um and the the coolest thing was just having like complete you know random people that you you know have never met before but you can just have like a 45 minute chat with because it's like such a, a um you know, a niche thing, I guess. Totally. Yeah. I had a similar experience. Um, I sold some wrestling merch at a local wrestling show, like 10 minutes from my house two weeks ago. And yeah, same deal. You just, I've never met any of these people before in my life. And yeah, I'm sitting there having these long conversations and, you know, it's great. You get to interact with people on that plane and, you know, you find out a little bit about them when they tell you who their favorite wrestlers are. It's like, you can kind of tell a little bit about something when they tell you who their top five favorite wrestlers are. You're like, oh, heck, yeah, I see you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's what I'm, I'm talking about when I was like, I see your stuff. And, like, the references come through, and I'm like, oh, man, this is this is kind of uh, very similar to to my my uh, fandom here myself. I mean, I before I get too much further, I want to want to direct everyone over to you having uh, one of the the coolest Instagram handles that I've come across. <laughs> <laughs> my my girlfriend asked me who I was um going to be chatting with today and I'm like oh I'll be interviewing Gotch style bong rips <laughs> this morning. <laughs> oh man that I don't you know it just kind of came to me. I've always had like a a thing for like I don't know I like funny handles, you know, in this internet age like I don't want to just call myself my name. You know what I mean mm-hmm. like the government's already got that. So, like, let me create, you know, who's my, like, we're wrestling fans, right? So who's my persona? And, uh, yeah, it just kind of came to me one night, just gotch style bong rips. Like, I don't do the pile driver like Suzuki, because <laughs> Minoru Suzuki's my favorite wrestler. Um, I was like, you know, I don't do the pile driver like him, but, uh, yeah, you know, I can relate it to a couple things, like the bong or something, <laughs> and... uh yeah, a lot of people have messaged me and just like, what a great handle. And it brings such a smile to my face because like, you know, I, I love to make, you know, if I can make someone happy or make someone laugh with just like something that makes me laugh, like that's awesome. Like hypes me up every time someone says that. Oh, for sure. And then like all of the kind of like punny references and that kind of stuff, it's just an extension of it. Hey. Oh, totally. My, uh, yeah, I love everything's a joke to make like i try to make everything into funny i'm a glass half full kind of guy so i just you know keep things light try to laugh as much as i can i like that i think i think that's how to be that's generally how i try to approach life i generally go like a 50 50 between being like a really like like everything sucks to just be like you know what i'm gonna choose to ignore all the things that suck and just focus on the good you know sometimes you have to man just to keep keep the positive going you know keep the Keep the vibes high is, you know, there's so much negativity in the world. I'd rather not focus that energy, like the energy I have for the day. I'd rather be stoked on something and, you know, and life's gonna, life's gonna be life and it's gonna, the machine will keep going. Yeah, for sure. And like, what better can we have for escapism than wrestling, right? 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel it's funny. Like here in Michigan, you know, uh, football is huge. Like they love the NFL and, uh, I, I got nothing for it. You know, I'm, I'm a pro wrestling fan. Like that's all I watch. Like I got free time. I got old nitros on, I got old nineties, whatever on, like I, I just watch wrestling, you know? And, uh, I tell people, I'm like, I feel like you're less crazy if you like pro wrestling instead of like professional sports. Cause at least we know, like <laughs> we all know what's going on. It's theater. You know, I'm like people freak out over these sports teams and it's like, man, just watch wrestling. You'll be cool. Just have a good time. Yeah, exactly. I, I um, it's similar here in Australia. Um, with I don't know if you know much about like Australian rules football. Um, uh, oh, it's kind of this crazy version of football where they play on like a like a round um, oval, uh, and uh, it's it's just all over the place. Like I guess with American football, it's a lot of specific direction, whereas this is just. It's kind of madness. It's kind of cool. I grew up on it being, like, pretty big. But, like you're saying, there's people who take it so darn seriously. Um, you know, I went to a game with uh, my my cousin because he's, he's super into it. And you have people, it's like, their life's, like, just, like, screaming violently at ref calls and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know. It's weird because, like, from wrestling perspective, I, I dig that getting to like scream like at a you know bad ref call, but it's like we're doing it with a bit of tongue in cheek, you know. Totally, yeah. Like we're part of the show too, you know. Like, and not to say that like every any fan watching anything that they're a fan of, like you're a part of it. Mm. Like regardless, from you know sports to theater to you know to chess, even like the crowd's part of it, you know. But yeah, some people who go a little too crazy start getting aggressive, fighting. Mm. The the violence over a game is insane to me. Yeah, I do not understand it. But uh, man, on on to like this this weirdly uh, specific uh, similarities that we're talking about. I bloody loved that um, Fujiwara Cat Club piece that you put uh. together. <laughs> I'm I'm such a Fujiwara mark, dude. Like. And when I saw that, he just, like, captured... And I've been following him, you know, as well, so I yeah. see all of his cat stuff. <laughs> I love it, man. He is he is a national treasure that I think just needs to be protected at all costs. Like, mm. I, you know, you wake up in the morning, you get to see Fujiwara and his cat, you're just like, wow, that's, that's what I strive to be. Like, my cat's passed out on my legs right now as we speak, so, like, I identify. I'm a part <laughs> of the cat club, you know? <laughs> and it's funny i uh i uh there's that original drawing it's like a takata graphic mm -hmm. that i saw on uh the tutacon website and i was like wow that's sick like i love to recreate these old graphics yeah. like the, the old all japan graphics like you'll see these crazy um the towels and stuff on ebay and like you know you can't get a clear view like there's not a clear image of them online like you gotta you gotta search the internet i'm sure they're there but you know i'm like i can kind of recreate that you know i can make that a little clear and give my own style to it and uh that's kind of the it's the wishing well i keep going back to i feel like Dude, I think that's so cool. Like, that was one thing that I was wanting to, to talk to you about in terms of uh, like references, inspirations, that kind of deal. Um, you know, I see uh, you, you know, shouting out a lot of this old, like, um, old Japan merch, you know, stuff from Gong Magazine. Um, you know, I, I just think it's so cool sort of taking something, repurposing it, a little bit um but i mean tell me more about your your uh your inspirations i guess it's funny like so i started doing art like i wouldn't say like making it a full passion you know it probably started about 10 years ago i was actually working for a skate shop in uh i was living in connecticut it's over on the east coast like mm. two hours from new york city and um I worked at a skateboard shop over there, and at the time, I like really wanted to be a uh, 
I wanted to be in like the skateboard industry. You know, that was my, my goal at the time. It's funny you say that because I definitely see a bit of a, a skate art aesthetic in your stuff. Oh, totally. Like it's, it, I don't think it'll ever go away. Yeah. Like I, uh, I realized like working at, I was working at a skate shop. I was uh, skating all the time. I was also popping my shoulders out all the time. So like kind of come to the terms, like I wasn't that good at skateboarding, you know, like <laughs> I could do a few tricks, but like in the grand scheme of things, money was not going to be made with me on a skateboard. So I kind of started doing art like that way. I was like, well, what else could I do to be a part of the madness? That's always kind of like been my philosophy in life is what can I do to be a part of something? Like if I'm not a good enough skateboarder, if like I'm not a big enough, if I'm not strong enough to be a wrestler, like how can I contribute? Right. It's like my kind of my mind frame for everything. And um, I started doing art um, at the skate shop. I was really big into, um, do you know Hunter S. Thompson? Yes, love Hunter S. Thompson, dude. So I went through quite a gonzo phase. In, I was like 20, from 21 to like 25. I'm 30 now. And um, yeah, I, I just like really wanted to be Hunter S. Thompson, I think. <laughs> And um, I found Ralph Steadman, oh, man. the guy who used to illustrate for Hunter S. Thompson and his art. Like I was trying to think of today, like who my biggest art inspirations are. And I think it really comes down to like Ralph Steadman set the fire off pretty huge for me. Oh, yeah. Just that gonzo style and just there was nothing perfect because like I can't do perfect. Like, I try. I am the same, dude. And I think from a very early age, Ralph Steadman was a big inspiration for me, too, in, like, making you be like, you know what? It's okay to be a bit rough around the edges, you know, a bit loose and, like, have a bit of personality in there. Totally. And I saw it. That's what, like, that's what, um, like, gravitated me to your work as well i saw the steadman influence right away in your stuff it reminded me of the um ah uh, he goes to like the horse race or something mm. in like 80s or 70s and they write a book about it or it was in rolling stone a lot of those early um comics and articles that steadman and hunter s thompson put together your drawings give me like uh brings me there gets me so hyped because like that's what got me into art is that style and just like the meltingness, the reality of life almost. Like, I know that's how they would like explain it in Gonzo. Like, not everything can be pretty, you know? Yeah. Some things are wrong, some things are real. Exactly. And like getting to bring an illustration to like some nuts, acid trip, like uh, fumes inhaling, like kind of deal. Oh. Like, it's amazing stuff. It's so good. Yeah. I had, um, in those early days of like, like doing, so like when I first started seriously doing art, the skate shop, like my first year of like, I'd say seriously making art. It's funny to say, but like I had a purpose, you know, like I really wanted to put pen to paper, paint to canvas, like anything. I was like ripping out pages of Catcher in the Rye and like painting on that and stuff and just trying to be as edgy as possible and uh the hive skate shop is where i worked um the owner charlie shout out charlie king he um early on he's like you want an art show he's like you, we he was doing art shows um around the time i had started working for him and uh, i got to work a lot of those art shows with a lot of um connecticut artists awesome um, a lot of the local guys uh Jamie Pearson was one. Um, this dude, Rob Von Guess. Like, they were just local guys in the area who had been doing art for a while, who were skate dudes. And um, Chad Consillo is another one of them. I can't forget Chad. Um, but I really, like, gravitated towards them. And I wanted to, you know, be the art skater guy. And uh, that's, I did that for a few years. And, uh, you know, I feel like with skateboarding, you find your way into... Uh, vandalism almost <laughs> and uh, i got into graffiti for a while and i kind of unfortunately like i feel like that took over almost and i stopped doing like regular art 
Now, I don't even like saying it sounds funny to say too, but like the faces and the Gonzo style, the stuff that got me into creating in the first place, like I kind of was just like super passionate on letters. Right. And uh, yeah, it kind of took me away for a while. Almost like six years, almost. Wow. I, like, I wasn't doing anything. It wasn't until actually recently um, I started draw like drawing again wrestling you know it pulled me back in and uh it was like the it's kind of the sidetrack off that like um i quit drinking this um quit drinking three years in july this july will be three years oh, congratulations and, man thanks man I, I think that that in like in doing that kind of helped me get back to like or like i've also been with like i kind of fell back into wrestling like Mm. five years ago i'd say and uh you know then i got sober and then i was like huh you know you clear your mind and you're like huh i used to i used to do art you know i can i would see things like i'd see all there's so many instagrams like yourself and um just i k-bop is another one they make such great work um inspire you guys inspired me and um i remember seeing um mid card merch put out an eddie kingston shirt i'm sorry yeah. if i'm kind of rambling here. no no please this is how i talk dude so this oh. is part and parcel perfect but um mid card merch put out this eddie kingston t-shirt that had um it was it looked kind of like the old all japan keychains that came out in the 90s you know he's got the um that little sweat mark on his forehead. He's yeah. all stanced up. And they made an Eddie Kingston version. Eddie Kingston being one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Yeah. Same. You know, I was I looked at that image. I was like, I think I can do something like that. And from then, I just kind of got back into drawing my faces. Because that's all I've, I did when I got into art, you know, like doing skateboard style art. Like, I always wanted faces on a skate like my specific style of faces like on a skateboard or whatever like that was always the dream yeah nice and then like once i started i was like i want to draw wrestlers like i was like i want to i want to have my own suzuki drawing that i can bust out whenever or like my own terry funk and like you know inspired by the internet and just inspired by wrestling got me back to where i am and uh i'm so grateful like it's funny you get you clear your head a little bit. Yeah, you stop doing something silly that maybe you shouldn't be doing, and uh, you know you see the world a little clearer. Yeah, that's how it's kind of felt the past uh, few years, you know. And then getting back into art has just been a whirlwind. I didn't know if I'd ever like be passionate about it again. I was kind of kind of bummed me out that I stopped doing it in the first place. It's so funny how that can just happen, dude. Like I um. You know, I was I was a art kid. You know, it was probably the one thing in high school that really like gave me something to focus on and like put my passions into, kind of deal. And then mm-hmm. there was a while when, um, you know, when when I was uh, you know trying to trying to be a worker back here in in Australia, <laughs> um, when I I just stopped making art because you know I guess you only have so much time in the day or whatever, or you make whatever excuse it is to you get distracted away from it um Mm -hmm. and then yeah coming back to it and i find this with a lot of people you know that i talk to that i've had on the show it's often a time when people kind of like get away from it but then they like fall back in love with it and i think that's that's really cool oh totally and it i think it goes to like that corny cliche of like um distance makes the heart grow fonder type Mm. deal it's it is true though like you weave something and you come back with a fresh set of eyes almost a fresh perspective on like hmm because you don't lose those tools it's like riding a bike almost Mm. like you may have like you may have your wobbles and almost fall over a few times but after a few reps and a few laps around the block you're like oh i remember how to ride the bike and like kind of how it feels with like getting back into art you're like oh yeah like you know the start firing on all cylinders you're just hyped again and 
it's I'm able to do more now, I think, than I could when I had like a closed mind just wanting to do skateboard stuff. Hmm. Feel the skills of doing other stuff too. I worked construction and stuff as well, so like the little monotonous of that I feel like helped in art as well. It's like I may not have been drawn or anything, but I was doing other things that kind of helped. Yeah. And it's like like you're saying, I think there's something to be said about when you're away from it when you come back to it it's almost like you can see things in a little bit more of a refined um you know like 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 clear eyes i guess so it sort of can make you have a bit bit i don't know things can get a bit muddied along the way you know what i mean like where you're just a little bit kind of like i don't even know i do a bit of this a bit of that but I guess when you have a bit of a break and then you come back to it, you're like, no, this specifically is what I want to do, you know? Yeah, the power of hindsight is like, it, you're able to look at a different angle, you know? I feel like when you're in the moment trying to do things, it's easy to, you know, it, it's easy to start being like, oh man, you know, type deal and overthink things. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's, I've found, I think, with you know putting the pen down in a way you know and stepping away from creating for such a long time something i i realize now it's like it's okay to not do something for a few days and to not burn yourself out like and just do what feels right like be it's okay to you know have a passion that you can't fulfill almost every day you know like cause i'd love to bust out a drawing every single day you know and like sometimes my mind's just not there like things don't work out like i'll have an idea to draw someone a certain way i'm like ah it's just not working today mm. and i just got to come back the next day and have the fuji have an idea of fujiwara and the cat and you're like oh <laughs> this works what the heck yeah i i mean it's like you um can yeah you, you put too much pressure on yourself to do something and there's nothing that's gonna like stifle creativity more than like being like oh i need to do this and it just isn't working kind of thing so it's good to to be able to um yeah just just put that pen down for a bit and come back to it when when you're feeling it you know oh totally i had to look this quote up. like my i really like stoic philosophy that's something that kind of like it gets you away from like you know only focus on things that you can control type mm -hmm. deal and that's kind of like i live that way then the, my disclaimer on stoicism like you take the good parts of it like like anything some things are kind of de depressing but like i like to just take the good from things and my favorite stoic quote is uh we suffer more in imagination than we do in reality so like we're just we can beat ourselves up and be our own worst enemy sometimes you know and like the reality of the situation isn't that bad oh for sure i uh i think i take a lot of that um bit bit uh not quite the same thing but i've, I've always taken a lot of life's inspiration from um the dude in the big lebowski oh and, and his general ethos about life of you know like fuck it let's go bowling <laughs> For real, like f that, honestly fuck it let's watch wrestling that's like yeah. my mantra in life because what are you gonna do you know like what are we really gonna do I can't change anything i can't you know it's hard enough to set a bank account up in one day exactly how am i gonna change my life in a day <laughs> i love it dude so um like Changing from the skate art specifically to the, the wrestling art subject matter kind of thing. I mean, I noticed that when I was scrolling back on your page, uh, a lot of it pre um, sort of mid to late last year, it was more focused on wrestling figure collecting kind of thing. And then um, you moved over to, to doing like posting more of your, your art stuff um and then like your actual output on what you're posting you know these days i think is like bloody respect man like <laughs> oh, man. i think it's rad and i mean when i look at it as well 
it it totally looks like you're doing it for the love of it um and i i don't know i i just think that's that's super cool i mean how how does that output happen is that just you doing it when you feel like is there a bit where you have to sort of push yourself to get in the zone sometimes or what it's fu- i accredit it to or what i tell myself is like i think those years off i'm just like you know you my legs weren't moving my hands weren't moving like i have a little bit of and I have all this built up energy sometimes. Like, I'm so flattered. <laughs> I feel like other people put out s- such great work. And, like, I'm just, tr- I feel like I'm sometimes trying to keep up, but like, I'm just trying to have fun too. Like, yeah. there, there's nothing that I post that I'm not like, that I don't want to post, you know? And uh, I think that helps too, just mm-hmm. being excited. Like, I'll see, um, I'll see you post something. And, like I said, K Bob post something i'm just like i get hyped i'm like ooh, what can i create you know and uh i a lot of times it kind of just comes to like that's a, <laughs> that's not to sound pretentious at all but like i don't know like i'll have these like half-baked ideas you know i'm like hmm that sounds good let's give it a try you know and f- taking inspiration from a lot of these all japan things definitely helps and then a lot of like i'm trying to also step out of my comfort zone and i think that's where a lot of these uh anime type like the all japan graphics like that's new to me it's a bit cleaner of a style like more straight lines are like rounded i'm like i'm trying to clean up a little bit you know just sharpen my skill set a bit so i can like i love that i love those little like those all japan logos like i wish I wish that guy, whoever drew those, like, I wish he had his own Wikipedia page, got the respect he deserved, because it's so sick. I mean, I'm sure I can find oh his name. Oh my gosh. They, they are so rad. Like, the, uh, the like, old portraits and, and the, the different shirts with the faces, and, like, the ability to capture, like, someone's whole vibe in such, like, they've, they've refined it down and they've captured the, the likeness in in such a weird way. Like, it's so funny to look at something and be able to differentiate, like, oh, for sure that is Taui, you know? <laughs> right, right. And the little detail, like, it's the smallest details. It's the way their hair goes. Because, like, I was drawing up that Masawa one today, and I'm like, I'm, I use the, um, the keychains as, like, my reference photos. And... Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm looking at the all of them. I got I got the pillars all on one page, like on a reference page that I look at when I'm drawing them up, and I'm like, they the smallest little details, like circle eyes, half circle eyes. You're just like the smallest things, but it makes sense. And the thing that cracks me up the most is like it's so like the the nature of it, like the cartoon nature for such a violent wrestling promotion is amazing (laughs) (laughs) you're just like absolutely like these are so cute and you're like these guys are dropping each other on their heads like and you're like i think that's the contrast right that like kawaii element to it it's amazing like you know kobashi dropping bloody steve williams on his head (laughs) and it's not too i think it's like it's not too serious you know what i mean like mm. it's got that the mickey mouse the logo vibe something you can look at right away and be like oh hey that's you know that's kawada that's Tawei. like and, but they're so simple and it's funny i feel like the simplest things to draw or the simplest things can be the hardest oh for sure you've realized that when you're trying to draw those things you're like wow i'm I had way too many cups of coffee trying this. Uh, maybe I should put the pen down for a little bit. It's something I, I bet. <laughs> it can be like that. I mean, I respect, uh, I love little touches of, of your stuff. Like, for example, um, like there's things that, that jump out to you. Uh, and again, they like, oh, what, hammer home uh, a likeness or, you know, a caricature sort of likeness, I guess. You have to focus on different elements. 
Um, and so, like, for example, for, like, a, a Kawada, you know, and, and I, I, you know, pick this up myself when I draw him, but it's always for me, and I noticed in yours too, like, those bags under his eyes. Oh, yeah. And you know what's funny? of the So everyone gets bags. I think it goes back to my Ralph Steadman obsession. It's like everyone's going to look way tired. <laughs> You're going to look like I'm drawing you. Like, I'm sorry. I just, I love the way those bags look under the eyes. <laughs> I think, I think that was like a huge thing for me when I first got into art, like into drawing and wanting to create things of my own was seeing, you know, those bags <laughs> under, like in skate art, like seeing that, like it just screamed not perfect. Hmm. And I think that, I knew I wasn't perfect from the beginning. And so seeing something that kind of offers like, you know, you look at Homer Simpson, even he looks perfect, you know. And like when I saw like, you know, Stedman style, I'm like, it's not perfect. I can I think that's something for me. Yeah, same. Absolutely. It's funny. My uh, I said this to my dad the other or a few weeks ago. He's a. Uh, He's a draftsman. He designs like airplane parts and stuff. And he's been doing that for my whole life. And he's he can you show him something, he'll draw it up real quick, you know, beautiful straight lines, you know, he's got all the technique and all the everything. He's got the skill. And I remember watching him draw a Lego man for me when I was like 7 years old. And uh I was like, "Dang, he can, my dad can really draw, you know, like I can never do that. And, uh, fast forward, you know, 24 years later, I still can't draw like him, but like, I'm still inspired like that by that dude's skill. And like, he's been creating my whole life. No wonder, like I have an urge to kind of create too, type deal. Nice. It's uh, it's funny when you see something different in terms of like a illustration style, that's like so you know completely the opposite of uh of your own and and i see you know for when i see other people who have stuff with like such clean lines and you know all this like real perfect kind of shit i'm just like that is that is so not my um you know thing or not something that i could do but i still like respect the hell out of it you know oh for sure like instant respect i something that sticks with me like in that sense, like I, I worked with it when I got into art, I was working at, I was working at a hospital, um, doing patient transport where you like take, um, someone in the hospital, like to their x-ray or, you know, take them to surgery type deal. Like I was doing that at a pretty young age, like 19. Wow. And, um, I, someone I worked with, she was, she was the type of artist, you know, she could draw SpongeBob perfectly. Like, she doesn't even have to look at him. She's just like, all right, let me just draw SpongeBob real quick, you know, or any character like that. And she was around. Right. You know, I'm like, how do you do that? I can't do that. Like, make a peanut butter sandwich without getting peanut butter on the counter or spilling jelly everywhere. Like, you know, we, we make messes over here sometimes. It happens. But, um, she gave me like the best cut she was like you have your own style and she's like that's something i always wanted and i'm looking at her like you can draw anything she's like yeah i can draw anything but you have a style that sticks out and when she it kind of you know light bulb went off in my head then and it was like oh Mm -hmm. i don't need to be perfect like i guess something i'm doing just has a specific style and i kind of just ran with that like didn't discourage me like i knew i wasn't like i wasn't like her you know i couldn't draw perfect things but to hear someone who could draw perfect things give me a compliment like that and kind of just tell me to keep going with it stick with your style i was like sick (laughs) thank you dude i i love that so much because like i think that is having a specific style and having a, a unique, uh, noticeable kind of style. It's something that's that's like important, um, you know, to me for myself. But it's also like such a huge thing 
that I look for um, and it makes me a fan of, of, you know, other people's art and, like, everyone that I get on, get on this show, you know, that that's a big part of it, having a, a unique and distinct style that stands out from, from everyone else. And, and that was a, a huge part about me reaching out to you because of your stuff being so distinctive. Um, and, and I love that so much. And, and I think a lot of people, um, honestly, they... It, it can be quite tough to find that style. Um, it can be really hard to kind of refine that. I mean, some people, like, spend a lifetime trying to find what is their their artistic voice kind of thing. So I I just really wanted to, to put over, like, how, how much I love that, yeah, she's absolutely right. Your style is, like, super distinctive, dude, and it's rad. Oh, man, you got me as red as Taoway's tights, man. I'm honored. And thank you so much for saying that, man. It means the world to me just to be able to offer any like for like, yeah, you got me flustered. (laughs) But, you know, it means the world to like to come from other artists as well. Like I'm stoked that anyone anywhere like likes and appreciates anything that I do. But like, you know, Eddie Kingston said it about Brian Danielson in that um, interview after they wrestled that revolution, not to, you know, steal his quote, but it's it's true. Like getting the respect from, you know, your peers, other artists like wrestlers liking the art like it uh, like it's amazing. You know, it it brings a smile to my face like the child in me. Like I became a wrestling fan at about six, seven years old. So like to make wrestling art now that wrestlers can see like yeah it's a dream come true almost you know it's it's not what i ever envisioned you know i i I think i wanted to be a wrestler as a kid and then like you know like i was saying earlier you know you find your way you get in where you fit in you Mm -hmm. know and uh the art making art is just i love it you know i'm and like i I like the Instagram says, like, just for fun, like, <laughs> I will not turn down. And if anyone would like me to draw a t shirt for them, more than happy to. But at the end of the day, like, just having fun, you know, like, trying to bring a smile to my face, be hyped, doing things I want to do, you know. And I think that's when things start working in life when you do things when you that you want to do, not doing things to keep up with everyone else you know man absolutely preaching to the choir here and i mean so much of what you just said is the entire reason why i I do this podcast um you know in addition for me just getting to geek out and just have like a rad chat like this that i'm really enjoying um i think it's it's super cool um getting to hear that that excitement about creativity and doing your own thing um and and you know i have i have people that reach out and they say you know hearing this kind of stuff then motivates them to want to create too so that's honestly a big part of it but dude you you uh couldn't have like refined that message more perfectly than you just did oh, thank you and it's cr- like you said people that's an other big one too and people say you motivate me to like want to create something like that that of an itself you're like oh my like <laughs> i want to thank them. <laughs> you want to like i want to thank them like thank you for feeling that type of way you know and like you know i'm just it stokes me out that i'm able to you know do that for people and it's just it's amazing you know hyping people up is dope oh man absolutely and then getting to you know see uh someone like eddie kingston for example who you know you said you you've uh, been a big fan of his for, for ages uh, same um you know getting to see him like finally get this you know recognition of how rad he is on the aew stage has been so cool after like you know me being a fan of his in like shikara and oh and aaw and shit um but oh, then yeah. like a dude like that and like I, I know he is a rad dude. Um, and you know, I've got friends that like tell me how much of a rad dude he is. But seeing how great he is in um 
giving those shout outs to the creatives that are like have making this like rad artwork uh of him um it's so sick to see and then and then seeing the same for him you know doing the the shout out for for your um kingston design that just made me so happy oh my god it's i think he's an example to not only like wrestlers but like anyone anywhere with a like he's so inspirational and anyone who has like a platform just like he 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 respects like I don't even, I don't even know how to say I can there's so many nice things I could say you know but like there's it's easy I feel like when you're on TV or something like that to like you know kind of ignore that sense and be overwhelmed by that because I can imagine how overwhelming that is you know like everyone under the sun hitting you up type deal like oh and the pressure of that position as well dude. it's insane so like knowing all the pressures he has and all that stuff and to still like he's one for the fans and it sh- and it shows you know and i think that's why he, he speaks real shit you know he's saying things that i felt that a lot of people i know have felt and like it, you know th- those are promos and those are words people will never forget you know we we're talking about how wrestlers like wrestling's like superheroes and like he's He's the ultimate superhero for like a guy like me, you know, and dude, I can cool look up you know? the same and like it's just sick, you know, to see like him react you know it's just awesome, yeah, like uh, your your um illustrations of Eddie as well, I think it's like it's so perfect again because of that sort of like sort of haggard rough around the edges style of your work, I think. It just suits, like, the Mad King uh, so bloody well. That means so much to me, man. I, thank you. I'm honored. It's, uh, oh, it, yeah, you know, it's, I'm, you know, being from, I was born in Rhode Island, so that's, like, two hours, uh, it's, like, two and a half hours from New York City, and it's, like, the smallest state in the U.S., so, like, I love New York City, like, being from Rhode Island, being from the East Coast lived in went to high school in connecticut like knowing he's from an east coast guy like he comes out in the yankee cap every time like it's sick you know i'm I'm an east coast boy so seeing that stuff you're like hell yeah you know east coast represent nice and like all of the 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 rap like hip-hop kind of references shit as well i really dig that honestly the way he talks about mental health is what really got like Mm. in a time where i was like you know, like I mentioned earlier, I quit drinking and stuff. And, you know, with that came, you know, readjusting my mental health and doing things in life to, you know, think healthier and be healthier, you know, and that came with like meditations and, um, you know, a little bit of yoga here and there. But like, you know, Eddie Kingston and like FTR as well, like bringing real life things that need to be talked about, having them about yes. like that's so awesome like how can you not be a fan of that you know dude i think it's so good and it's so important um you know like i i i you know pride myself on on my friendships that that you know i've got with uh with my buddies where you know it, it's not something to be ashamed of in any sense like talking about mental health shit talking about when when stuff's actually hard you know getting away from that you know surface level kind of bullshit um i I think more dialogue that we can have where dudes can just feel um you know comfortable to talk about that that real shit that's going on um i think that's better for for everybody oh totally like the macho mentality like like coming up like you know my like love my dad to death but like he was a macho type dude when i was a kid and like a lot of people's dads were macho the 90s and early 2000s was a macho time feelings Mm -hmm. what are those like so to you know as i grow older and as i grew older like in my early 20s like i don't know i've always cried like i've always been okay with crying and uh, so i kind of couldn't help that so like just crying and letting it out and 
it's funny. Like as a kid, when I'd cry in front of someone, they'd be like, oh, look at you cry. I'm a gr- <laughs> being a grown ass man now crying in front of like other grown ass men. I'm getting some, I've gotten some props. Yeah. They're like, damn, I wish I could let my feelings out like that. It's like, bro, you can. Like, you can let them out. It is okay. No one's judging you. Like, you're going to feel so much better when you let those feelings out anyway. Like, hell yeah, dude. What are you keeping them in for? Like, I think we all need to talk our feelings out. Like, it's, yeah. it's a necessity in life. Man, if you bottle that shit up, it's like, not, not good things are going to come. Oh, oh, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you, and it all, it's all, you know, asking yourself difficult questions and, kind of being like am i doing things that are you know making me think this way be a negative do i have to change do i need to readjust you know because sometimes it's as simple as switching up your routine and that could get your mood in a crazy you know 180 yeah it can be the littlest things that you can change that can, you know, make a make a difference. But I, I still think the most important thing of all of them is is just talking. Totally, I 100 percent agree. You, you just letting it out. Mhm. For sure. And always, it's again to get back to what you were saying earlier of um, like, you know, how different it is of like when you're ruminating on something just in your mind in this echo chamber. Oh. Yeah. This is like when you actually, you know, get it out of your head and you're like, oh, actually, when I say it like that, maybe it's not quite as dramatic as I was thinking. Shout out Seneca, man. He he had it figured out with that quote. Because we do. We we suffer inside and we keep, we bottle it up. And then, yeah, once we tell someone, like, I'll tell my girlfriend, like, what I'm freaking out on or something like that. And she looks at me and she's like, it's all right. Like, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. You got this. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I do. I'm just yeah. stressing out. Dude, this is this has been such a nice chat. <laughs> I, I had no um yeah. A lot of the time the best ones are like when you just have no idea where it's it's necessarily gonna go and then you're just like, man, this is so rad. So awesome, man. I'm again so honored that you asked me to be a part of this and you know I'm such a fan of your work and you know wrestling fans, we gotta stick together, so it, just uh it's an honor my friend dude it was my honor to have you on i would definitely love to have you back on the show because there's so many more things that i want to talk to you about that we didn't get a chance to to chat about today oh, for sure. um but uh what what would you like to to plug here in in uh, wrapping it up oh shoot well i guess uh i guess i'll shout out uh shout out my wrestling group chat some good marks too i also want to shout out the most important crew of all in my life that's the bfg that's uh my baby uh my cat fred and my cat george uh together uh we are an island and we are the bfg so yeah shout out my girlfriend and my cats i love them very much (laughs) and uh yeah, man. Uh, look, I'm going to have some pins coming out soon. Once I kind of figure out how to make merch, I'm, I think I'm going in that direction. Rad. And uh, yeah, if any wrestlers would like some drunk, like any work done, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, man. Anything anyone wants, man. I'm, I'm offering my services. Guys, hit this dude up. I uh, I swear if you're a, you're an indie worker out there or, or any kind of worker, uh, you're you're gonna have some some rad ass merch that people are gonna want to buy uh, from uh, Gotch underscore style underscore bong underscore rips. Rad shit, man. Ah, oh, my man. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Such a great talk. Dude, my pleasure. Um, and honestly, uh, it was just just so much fun. I, I really would love to to have you on um, to to just continue the the nerd out session. Um, I love it. And I, uh, you know, I might even be coming over around uh, your way um, later this year oh. for for an expo. So I'll, I'll definitely hit you. Let up. me know, man. Let me know. That'd be awesome to link up. Dude, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again, man. I, I super appreciate thank it. Thank you. I appreciate you. And thank you for having me. And uh, long live wrestling. <laughs> right, dude. Take care. You as well, my friend. Okay, man. That was so much fun. <sighs> that, that right there is exactly why I do this podcast.
I, uh, I hope everyone else enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, man, definitely have to have Petey back on the show in the near future. Uh, <laughs> so good. Um, all right. So uh, I, uh, I want to make sure I'm uh, thanking uh, our um, social suplex friends here. Uh, great guys that allow me to do this show. Uh, you can check out socialsuplex.com, a variety of other rad wrestling podcasts that you can check out as well. Um, I uh, Also, if you feel like uh, checking out my stuff, in case you don't already, at Chris Things on the Instagram, at Chris Things on the Twitter. Um, I, uh, I'd frankly be surprised if you didn't already know about those things, but if you don't, there you go. Um, ChrisThings.com.au is the best place you can go if you'd like to check out that art. Maybe maybe buy yourself some of it. Maybe get yourself a print. Uh, maybe, maybe get yourself an original artwork, mug, calendar. The, the world is your oyster on there, really. Um, you know, if, if you uh, really dig my stuff and, and you have, like, a cool idea for some art, well, heck, let's, let's do this. Why don't we do a commission? Uh, you know, commission work actually is maybe a bit, uh, can be a bit more affordable than you might have assumed. Um, uh, commission work uh, for me generally starts around about the, the 150 bones mark um, and then it, it can go uh, a bit higher depending on, on you know, the level of detail or, or how time consuming some might, something might be uh, but you know if, uh, if you're after just a, a little old something whether it's for like a, a gift or uh, you know picture of your girlfriend's dog uh giving giving bob backland a, a boston crab then man let's do this i think that'd be that'd be a great idea <laughs> don't ask me where that uh that came from it's uh really really scraping the weird bits of my brain right there but uh no <laughs> i i really appreciate you guys um you know anyone that, that uh listens to this uh on on a weekly basis or even an every now and then basis if you listen this far uh that, that shows a sincere level of care and commitment um and, and i just want you to know that that you are appreciated um and uh yeah it, it's really touching you know any anyone that supports in whatever way, um, my uh, my wrestling art journey, um, it it honestly means the world to me. So uh, big old thank you to you, the listener. Um, and on that note, I uh, I think I think that's about it. I think uh, I think yeah. All right, <laughs> man. When when I finish this and I don't have someone else with me, it's like how do you how do you end it? I don't do know. Well, I think you just have to say. Uh, do the hammer like a turkey dance. Bye. Yeah, do the hammer like.